All right, guys, back for another video. I guess that video I did last time was pretty, fairly popular. Got a few hundred views. Talking about archery self-defense, right? So we're going to get into a little bit more detail in this video. Last video, I made some mistakes. So we're going to try to optimize and uh, make better choices um, in this video. Once again, I highly recommend that you learn how to learn how to basically somehow like well, a lot like I said a lot of people do is they grab and they grab by the shaft and then they stick it on the on the string right stick it on the string right um, if you like doing it that way and it makes you comfortable cool on you uh, my recommendation when it comes to archery self-defense right if you want to learn how to just some people use it as a joy they, they like shooting me I don't really like it just because it's entertaining. I like it because I could potentially use this in a self-defense situation. A lot of people think you can't use a bow in a self-defense situation. Once again, they've used bows for thousands of years. Thousands of years in warfare, uh, rangers, uh, horseback, you know, Turkish archers. Look at them. Chinese, the samurai, they use bows, right? In fact, for a samurai, they prefer to use a bow or some kind of a spear-like uh, weapon over the katana. A lot of people think, oh, they just use katanas. No. Katana was their secondary weapon. Your bow uh, is a ranged weapon. You can use it fairly up close, or you can use it really, really far away. So, once again, I recommend that you learn how to draw whatever way you, whatever, whatever suits you best. People use different methods to draw. Um, I try to use where I keep my arm out, hopefully, sometimes I don't remember, sometimes I drop my arm, but I typically try to, you know, stick it on the string um, without looking, right? Without looking. And then I go into my draw. Um, once again, I know that one was, that was kind of a horrible draw technique. It's a little bit harder with gloves, but you just kind of have to kind of get used to it, right? Don't make any excuses. Um, just try to get past, like with fingers, obviously, there's more sensitivity, so I can feel the knock a little bit better. But you got to kind of get over myself, right? So what I'm going to try to do is get better at uh, drawing, right, and not looking down. Looking down is, will get you killed, right? So once again, sticking it on the string, and then I come back to my draw, right? Um, another thing, like once, I, once again, I made this analogy the last time. You have an AR-15, right? AR-15, right? And you got your, your bead on the target, right? Once you run out of rounds, do you, do you, are you supposed to drop your gun? For those of you guys who serve time in the Army, or you just watch videos on YouTube, how the pros load their weapon, right? When they load their weapon, they're not dropping it and looking down, right? They're keeping their eyes on the target. They train themselves to grab the next clip, magazine, whatever, Load it and continue to keep shooting, right? They'll even release, hit the you know the, the little release, and then flick it, flip it out, and put the next in. But they're not dropping the weapon. So same thing with the bow. Um, after you shoot, so after I shoot, right? I shoot, right? I need to keep my bow ready, right? Ready to engage again. Um, once again, <laughs> I'm not doing a good job. I'm not doing a good job of this, but. Here, let me let me demonstrate for you guys again and see if I can get it this time. It, once again, it takes a lot of practice. I'm losing daylight, so I'm kind of making this as quickly as possible. But I'm trying to quickly get my shot back on it, right? So, like I said, that last couple times were not good, right? Like I said, with gloves, uh, gloves affect sensitivity. So it's very hard to feel the knock um, when you're wearing gloves. So... Like I'll show you guys without gloves. So without gloves, right, without gloves, I can actually feel my knock. So I can feel my knock and I can stick it on there. See, see how easy that was? But you don't have the luxury. If, if you have a, a stronger poundage bow, you're going to have to get over the fact, um, get over the fact that you can't really feel the knock. It's a little bit harder to feel the knock, obviously. So... Once again, my recommendation is just to practice a lot. You guys are already seeing me. This is real time. This is a realistic video. 
realistic training video on, you know, uh, archery self-defense, right? So you want to be able to get used to, um, get used to drawing, you know, drawing the next, and even if you look down really quick and then get on target, you're still kind of, you're, it's better than, it's better than, whoops, <laughs> I just pulled the knockout. Um, but it is better than this whole thing when you're dropping the, the arrow down here you drop it down here and you're trying to do this right you're not aware of your target um so you're gonna once again just being aware is keeping your bow first of all on target and then when you draw it when you draw it you want to be able to have that knock open to a certain degree so i'll show you guys up close here you want to be something like that like that somehow some way Figure it out. Just go out in the middle of nowhere, even in your room. Point it away from the door <laughs> to a wall or whatever. And you're just going to practice drawing, right? Drawing the arrow, the arrow and putting it on, right? Right? And then you want to get draw the next one. Right? And then you grab the next one. And then you shoot. Once again, I'm not perfect. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I will show you guys um, a technique that I would use in self-defense. Once again, if I am, if I can create distance between myself and the enemy, that would be very, very helpful. So, having myself prepared, have my bow in my vehicle or wherever I'm at on me at all times in case I have to engage. String it really quick. You should be able to know how to. You don't need to stringer. A lot of guys out there use stringers. They're good. Once again, if you, if you all you know how to use is a stringer, you won't be prepared in a, in a tough situation. With this right here, I can sit my foot through really quick. And then come, you know, and then I could get it back on target. Make sure it's lined up. Boom, and I'm ready to go. It takes me about what five to eight seconds. To string a bow, unstring it. All right, so you should practice learning how to string it manually, right? Stringers, good. I'm sure it's better for your bow. It's a little more even on your bow. But in a self-defense situation, I might need to string that thing really, really quickly. Now I'm gonna show you guys something. I made a mistake last time. I was kind of standing out in the open and engaging the target. I should have my arrow on the string. And the only time that they used to see me is when I'm releasing that arrow. So once again, I'm gonna show you. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you guys from shooting from behind the vehicle, like once the last run down here. So I think I missed one, missed one shot, but all of these hit, as you can see, all those hit. So you wanna be able to hit where you're aiming at for the most part. Every once in a while, yes, you're gonna throw off an arrow. I just threw off one, but that's kind of how it's supposed to be done. Those of you guys out there are like, are you shoot? Are you actually hitting your target? Or are you just showing us videos of you shooting, but not hitting anything? No, I'm able to hit some stuff. By the way, this arrow back here broke earlier. <laughs> the tip broke off of it, so I'm not using that arrow anymore. So I am uh, low on arrows again. That's the, the driving hustle of our So stay frosty, guys. <laughs>